broadcast the next morning. We're trying to pick up where we left off Monday. Amen. And try to express to those who are seeking after righteousness the true way. Yes. Amen. Which is found in the true light. According to the word of God. And again, the Bible is our roadmap. Yes. A living testimony from the Lord Jesus Christ to the people seeking after righteousness and truth. The Bible says, search the scripture. Now we think you have eternal life. These are they that testify of me. So the whole Bible again is a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray your report. <laughs> Evangelist Shiloh. Two hundred thousand. All right, y'all ready? Evangelist Shiloh. One thousand dollars. <laughs> Then his wagon. One thousand dollars. Once again, you can't do God's giving. Amen. And when you give it to the Lord, it's hard sacrifice money. Don't think that your labor is in vain. Right. Because you are able to get a prayer through. Many times we pray to God, we think that God is not hearing our prayer. But when you, from the sincerity of your heart, step out on great faith right. and make sacrifices, and brothers and sisters, for working class people to give the type of money that they give in true life, it ain't nothing but a sacrifice. A sacrifice is something that you give up that you need. That's why they call it a sacrifice. Right. So again, God hears your prayer. Yeah. And he'll ask you. Yeah. When? Yeah. Bible says in due season. Right. Yes. Which means it's on the way. Now you can't say exactly when, but it's on the way. Yeah. Due right. season. And there is a season for all things. There's a time for everything. And in due season, God is going to richly bless each and every one of us. Has he not already though? Yeah. Yeah. Could be somewhere else. Yeah. Could be in a cemetery. Amen. I reflect and look back on my life and how God has brought me from such a long ways. Amen. Now he has healed my body time and time and time again. I tell you, brothers and sisters, God's a wonder. Yeah. And God will keep his covenant, yeah. promise yeah. each and every one of us, oh, yeah. as long as we walk upright before him. Now here's what I'm saying. When you walk upright, you are living all you know how. And once you live all you know how and you're walking by faith, you believe in the word of God. Right. If you stumble, you get back up again. Yeah. If you need your tendency, you can't be so far. If you need all on you, as according to the scripture. And he said, come on, you call for the elders of the church, they shall not with all, the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and if they ever committed sin, it shall be forgiven them. Amen. Not maybe, right. not might be, yeah. but shall be forgiven them. Mm -hmm. So again, we thank God for the power of his grace and his mercy, yes. and the Amen. power of his forgiveness, and the power of a repentant heart. So again, you know, messed up. Right. Don't be ashamed to say, Lord, I messed up. Right. And don't be ashamed. Tell the preacher, would you please put some oil on my head? Hallelujah. I'm going to run this race and not in vain. So again, brothers and sisters, let's not let anything hinder us from the mission at hand. And that is to bear witness of the truth. That we can stand before the judgment throne of God and hear him say, well done. That good and faithful servant. Well done. Yes. But did you finish first? I may not have finished first, but I finished. That's right. It's about first, it ain't about last. It's about finishing your course. Right. Do what you can do for God's kingdom. Yes. And be always be sincere in heart. Always allow for the Spirit of God to motivate you and develop a character within you. And that once you develop that character in you, you'll find a peace and a happiness that'll come inside of you. 
I remember, and I'm going to get to my text in a minute. Matter of fact, I'm going to open up in Matthew 7, chapter. Uh, when I first got called to the ministry, as you know, I've shared this story many times. Someone told the pastor they saw me at the bus stop smoking a cigarette. I would never think it that long as I lived. One thing, I never did smoke cigarettes. Man. And at a bus stop, I hadn't rode the bus since I was a teenager. Right. I might have rode the bus once or twice when I was in the military service. But since I've been growing and had a family, I always had my own transportation. Amen. And so being in Pentecost holiness and a minister, Pastor called me in the office. Said someone said they saw you last Tuesday at the bus stop smoking a cigarette. I want to know if it's true. I said, Pastor, it's not no, not only not true, it's a lie. Amen. In fact, I, one thing I never smoked because I smoked cigars. And I haven't smoked a cigar since I got baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, now if you want to come in the parking lot, I'll show you the car I drive. So I couldn't have been at no bus stop last Tuesday. Amen. He said, okay, I believe you. So I said, Pastor, I want to know who told me that. Who told you that lie on you? He looked at me and he started smiling and said, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Brothers, this is true. Everybody I saw that day, that night at service, I said, I knew it was that one. I know, I know it had to be him. It had to be her. It almost made me crazy. And the pastor told me, he said, let me tell you one thing. You can never outrun a lie. But your character cannot live one. And this is why I try to tell everyone, never be deceptive in your imagination in church. Always be for real. Brothers and sisters, it's not difficult to be for real if you mean Christ. And if you mean to see his face in peace. So let's, let's learn how to develop a quality of character through the instruction of the Bible that will cause me to have a, a strength and inner strength. So no matter what happens on this earthly journey, I still got Jesus. And I'm going to hold on to him at the end of my journey. And understand, we all got a race to run. And we're going to run it to the end of the journey. Whether he calls you home, whether the rapture comes, you're going to still run it to the end of the journey. Whether you offend God, whether you leave the church or not, you still will have to one day stand for the judgment throne of God. And each soul must give an account as his work shall be, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Amen. So again, taking off from uh, Joyce Myers, there's no such thing as reward in heaven for those who are bad. Understand, and you two uh, listeners, you may pay, pay close attention to these teachings, might save your soul one day. Amen. The character that the Bible teaches is in, in, always in a development stage. I grow and grow and I progress and progress. I never go backward. I may slow down, but I'll never go backward. Now, if I start going backward, I gotta repent and I gotta get some more strength in me. But the strength comes from the word of God through faith. Faith is something you cannot imitate. Amen. Either you believe or you don't believe. Yes. I shared many, many times, there's no such thing as a woman being almost pregnant. Right. <laughs> she's either pregnant or she's not. Right. You got faith or you don't have faith. Right. But if you don't have faith, what you need to do is stretch out before God and the Lord, I need more faith. Right. I need faith to believe. Man. Believe what? The Holy Bible. Right. Once you read the Bible, everything will take its proper place. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, we're on a journey, and now it takes a whole lot of faith and a whole lot of self-discipline for you to run this journey successfully, run this race at the end of the journey successfully. Now in Matthew the seventh chapter, we, we shared last week about once saved, always saved. And I say to the Pentecostal church membership that may be watching and to the followers of Joyce Myers who may be watching, anytime someone tells you that you're going to heaven no matter what you do, whether we be right or wrong. Brother said that doesn't even balance out right. It, it, in your mental concept, you know that, that don't sound right. That's just like saying I can rob a bank and if they catch me, I ain't going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> you know they passed a law up in New York and uh, they say a person commit 
a felony. If you don't have no bond money, they're not going to set, uh, uh, establish a bond because working class people can't pay no bond. So therefore, they release them. And then they caught this guy hitting around three banks in the last, I guess, the last three or four or five months. He robbed three banks. So they said, they think about it, you got to change that law. Amen. Go. Oh, you don't have to go to jail? No, you don't have to go to jail. If you're a trial date, that might be a year and a half down the road. Mm -hmm. No bail. Because what that people can't afford bail. So what is the country doing? It's trying to tear down more responsibility and allow for wickedness to prevail Amen. with no form of necessary punishment. But there has to be a reward for things that are not right and a reward for things that are right. So when we hold it in its proper perspective, we have to understand the reason why the Bible instructs us in the ways of righteousness is that we might have a great reward, not only in this life, but in the life to come. Amen. I said, look at us tonight in church. Amen. Right. Amen. Ain't nobody here hurt me. Yeah. You ain't hurt too bad, you're in church. Yeah. You ain't too bad. You don't let some pain every now and then. It's good for you. Amen. Yeah. And they let you know I got to pray tonight. Right, yeah. Yeah. I said, well, that thing goes through all the time. Man, he will hardly with nobody pray. So you've got to understand, I have a cross to carry. And regardless of what that cross is, my cross may not be your cross, and your cross may not be my cross, but everybody here in this room got a cross. Right. And cross means the way of suffering and pain. Right. So I got a cross to carry. But Jesus said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. Amen. So again, let's understand our responsibility. Let's practice discipline and truthfulness. Right. Let's develop that character of Christ. And again, never try to be deceptive to the church. Never try to use the church for an advantage. And allow for other people to bear your responsibility. That's not decent and it's not in order. Nobody knows the heart of the individual but God himself. The one thing I would like to impart before I get to my text, only what you do for Christ is going to count at the end of the journey. And when you try to practice deception, sooner or later, it will catch up with you. Yes. And God will snatch a rope from underneath you, and brothers and sisters, you will fall flat on your face. Amen. Never try to use the church for an advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, the truth, some of us are struggling. Going through something. God knows that. Some of us wish they could Wish they could get a hundred dollar offering and maybe can't. God knows that. But don't ever try to use deception. Say, I'm going to give me a little nest egg here and I'm going to say goodbye to that Pentecostal church. Yeah. What's going to happen down the road? Mm -hmm. Nobody ever left homeless and got rewarded. Nobody. I, I would put it this way. Nobody left homeless and got a reward that is positive in its nature. Amen. Amen. And everybody is going to be rewarded one way or the other. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that must he also reap. So if you plant corn, you're not going to get apples. Hallelujah. Right. If you plant Deception and discord mm -hmm. down the road, that's what you're going to reap. Mm -hmm. Deception and discord. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and I'm saying this is so you need to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Be for real. Mm -hmm. And if you're for real with God, He'll bring you through every obstacle and every trap that the enemy tries to set before you on this journey. And He'll bring you through. And He'll bring you through with joy, gladness. And he's still this apart. But we have to be for real. And that's what the teachings is about. For you to be for real and have faith and trust in God. Amen. Amen. Now I'm in Matthew the seventh chapter. Jump right into verse. Let's pick up in verse 13. 
Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in therein. Now here in this text, the Lord Jesus is teaching, and he's letting you know that there are two ways. One is a broad way. Do whatever I want to do. Amen. I'll enjoy Myers. You still say, do whatever you want to do, you still say. But the next way, uh, verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Narrow the way. Now, it's like, it's talking about eternal life here. Amen. Or heavenly reward. Narrow. Now the difference between wide and narrow. Narrow means I got not too much room for error. Not too much room for maneuver. I've got to follow that narrow way. And each person that is saved must follow a narrow way. Now, how many will be defined? A few. A few that be defined. Now, in the in the uh, first text of verse 13, why is the way? And many that be to go their right. Yes. But in the next text, verse 14, narrow the way and few that be they can find it. What is God saying? Only a few people going to heaven, brother. Right. Right. Don't, don't believe right. all this mess. Everybody's going to heaven to go to church. Few there be that can find it. Yeah. Why? Because only a few want to follow the word of God. Read. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Now, if there wasn't a need to be forewarned of hypocrite preachers, why do you think this would be in the text? Beware, again, is a word that means be on guard. Amen. Be watchful. Be careful. Caution. How many times you come to a curve and they say caution? In other words, slow down. Right. Sometimes the sign says slow down. You're doing 40, 50 miles now, and you come to that curve, and sometimes it's a sign in there, you're going to go ahead on it. Well, I can do this. And, and, and you see what can happen. So, the word beware it, it, it's a warning to the church this is not to people outside of you this is a warning to the church read that again beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are raving in wolves inwardly they're devils Amen. inwardly they're not going to tell you the truth Amen. brothers and sisters if a preacher does not tell you the truth you ain't got no business following that preacher and if a preacher tells you you can do whatever you want to do and you still say, you need to hurry up and leave that church. If you've never heard another Bible verse, you ought to have enough sense to know there has to be a, 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 a difference between right and wrong. Did not the Bible say it must be a difference between holy and profane? Yes. Between clean and unclean? Mm -hmm. There's got to be a difference. And if all heavenly reward would be for everybody to do whatever you want to do, why would there be a need for discipline? Why would Jesus say, pick up your cross? And follow me. Why did Jesus say, deny yourself Amen. and pick up your cross? Things I want to do, I can't do. Well, I gotta deny myself. All right. Pleasures I might want to have in this world, I gotta die, deny that. Amen. Well, I got a cross to carry. The rich young ruler came to God and said, Tell what you didn't inherit, inherit eternal life. Mm -hmm. And God said, Have you paid your tithe? He said, Yes, paid my tithes. I'm your mother and father. I've done that. Amen. Went all through a list of things, done all that. But there's one thing that you haven't done. You got a whole lot of wealth, a whole lot of money, a whole lot of material things, and you refuse to give that up. Go and give all that up. Not half, not part. Amen. Give all of it. And then come back. And what? Pick up your cross and follow after me. The Bible said the rich man left away sorrowful. Turn his back on God and walked away because he had too much wealth. He had too much he wanted to hold on to and not give up. Amen. See, when God saves you, you give up everything. Not the things you want to give up. Give up everything. Hallelujah. That you might, Paul said, I, get, I count everything lost and I can win Christ. And I told you he was a rich man. He gave up everything. Yep. Gold going. Did he get on the ship to go and preach? The ship got in a storm. He went on an island. He was cold and wet. Went to make a fire and a poison snake bit him. 
Go, what else is next? <laughs> Here I'm preaching the gospel, got shipwrecked on an island, clothes wet and everything cold, ain't got nothing to eat. Go, go make a fire to try to at least get warm. Here a poison snake man. And the heathen on the, oh, 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 on, on the island looked to, uh oh, he'll be dead in a couple hours. Just watch. Just watch. The Bible says he walked over to the fire and shook that snake off. Amen. And kept on trucking. Hallelujah. Kept on trucking on. Amen. And never got sick. Why? Because God was risen. But God was trying to show something. Even though you are preaching the gospel, even though you are living a sanctified life, you're still going to run into obstacles. And you can't question God, how come? Amen. Why me? Why am I going through this? So, brothers, I'm trying to bring all this to a, a perfect scenario to let you know. There's no such thing as an easy way, but there is a requirement that all the church of God must follow. And that requirement is a holy and sanctified life, even in this present world. Where are we at? Verse 16, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grace of thorns or figs of thistles? Now notice it says you shall know them by their fruit or by their lifestyle. Yes. If one saved, always saved. Why even notice a lifestyle? Why even notice whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong? All of us saved. So you see the conflict here. By not taking the Bible in right division. Amen. The scripture has to be rightly interpreted. Study to prove yourself a work unto God that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing yeah. the word of truth or properly interpreting the sanctified Bible. Read. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Uh -huh. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Now, I wonder if George Myers can hear that and understand that. A good tree can't produce bad fruit. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. Now again, we're not talking about a tree. Amen. God's using a parable, but he's talking about a soul. A soul that saved is not going to continually be agnostic, uh, be hateful, uh, be disrespectful, uh, be unhappy, Amen. and uh, be uh, uh, very negative in talking to a brother or a sister. You know, sometimes you can tell you use words to hurt somebody's feelings. You yeah. asked me a question, not told. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how did you tell me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you nice. were, you, were, were you treating them the way that you yourself would like to be treated? Mm -hmm. Did you answer them in a sweet way? Sometimes you got to correct yourself. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you are burdened with a whole lot of animosity and worry, It'll create, it'll create within you an inner thing that causes you to react to other people who ain't never done you no wrong. Amen. In other words, you talk short to them. No folks say talk short to them. Amen. Which means you kind of hurt my feelings, but you did it in a clever way, but it still hurt my feelings. Amen. Think before you speak. Think before you do something. Think before you react. Amen. It is proper. It's a decent. Is it in order? And if you got the Holy Ghost within you, it'll it'll stop you right on the spot. Hmm? Uh, not say that. <laughs> Sometimes the best don't say nothing. First <laughs> wash on the on the, on the day they ain't supposed to wash. And why would they do that? Here I am, my day to wash in there, they got their clothes in there. But sometimes it's best not to say nothing. Because maybe if you say something to the person who has done this, they might take it wrong. Oh, now, look how they spoke to me. But well, I'm just trying to tell you, my day to work, you got your clothes in there. Is there something wrong with that? Sometimes there is. So you, you, you try a situation. Now, if I say this to this person, would that person get offended? Mm-hmm, yep. Why? I know that's a persona. That's his persona. So maybe I don't say nothing. I don't take your clothes out and just throw them on the floor and say, my, <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> I'm showing you an example of something so insignificant and little can cause you to miss eternal life. Amen. Can cause you to miss a healing when you need to be healed in your body. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Got a phone call today, Principal, if you do up real good. Need help. Need help. So if you do up real good. 
going to a false church. Mm. Well, call that false church pastor. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why call me? Amen. So, people are hurting when you don't think they're hurting. Yep. And watching true light when you think they're not watching true light. Amen. And mm -hmm. sorrowful because they left true light and they don't have enough humility to come back to true light. But when they get in serious trouble, who they call? Amen. Amen. And I don't know why. Sometimes they think because you're in holiness, that makes you foolish. Amen. Right. <laughs> but I ain't foolish. Amen. Right. Right. I got no sense to You left because you want to leave. Right. And the reason why you don't come back, because you don't want to come back. Amen. Amen. Now you need some help. You need some prayer. Think. Why? When you already have left the faith, obviously you don't believe. So why all of a sudden now you need a favor? Amen. People don't stop and think sometimes. Amen. Or they think that maybe they can get a little step ahead of the church. But you can't get a step ahead of God. Amen. And when God unfolds something to the leader, it's clear as glass ice water. Amen. Amen. And you don't cast your pearls among swine. Amen. In other words, I'm not going to give no favor to somebody who I know is not worthy. Amen. Amen. By their fruit, Amen. you know them. How do I know they're not worthy? Look at their life. Amen. How come they're not here? How come they're not picking up their cross? How come they're not accepting their responsibility? They don't believe. Amen. He that believes is baptized, the same shall be saved. He that believes not shall be lost. Yeah. Right. That's the word of God. Mm -hmm. So here in this teaching in Matthew, it's showing you the difference between good and evil. A good tree cannot produce a hateful spirit, a hateful attitude. Can't. And otherwise, other, other way around, if you're wrong, there's no way in the world you're going to produce Peace, happiness, and joy to your brother and your sister if you're wrong in your heart. Because right. a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now the heart ain't talking about that pump. It's talking about the inner man, the inner being. Amen. Amen. All right, now in verse 24. Many will say to me in that day. Watch close. Once saved, always say, watch close. Many will say to me in that day, talking about the judgment day. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Uh -huh. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye Wait, that now what's that latter part? I never knew you. Depart, depart from, from me. me ye well, wait a minute. I'm, all, I'm saying. How you going to say depart from me? Amen. God ain't will never tell somebody depart from me if you're already saved. All right. And once they always say, why say, depart from me. Right. Go away from me. Yeah. And we're talking about the judgment. Then we say to me in that day, talking about judgment day. Mm -hmm. Have we not done many things? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, but something you ain't done right. Amen. Depart from me. Amen. Neither what? Work a nickel. Oh, wait a minute here. Now, you that sin. But I thought at Calvary. You washed away all my sins, and I can still sin. No, you can't continue in sin. Continue. Not that you don't sin. Continue a life of sin. Amen. Continue an unsaved life. That's a whole lot different than a person messing up every now and then. All right. When you continue a life of sin, you're not saved. Amen. And if you repent of a sin that you have committed, then the Holy Ghost comes back in you. But once you are living a life of sin, you don't have the Holy Ghost inside of you because the Bible says God will not dwell in an unclean temple. Amen. If a person sinful, you ain't got Christ inside of you. Amen. Now if you repent, from where? From your heart. Not words. From your heart. Amen. Then God enters back in. So again, once we understand, and another scripture says the soul is sinner, it must die. So the person that commits sin, I'm going to continue sin now. Don't misunderstand me. A continued life of sin. 
a continued life of deception, a continued life of lying and deceiving, trying to take advantage again. When you continue doing that, God said, I don't know you. Amen. Depart from me. Read. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in it. Therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them, I will like him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Now, now where is that passage? Uh, but they that do the will of my Father. Is that verse 25? Verse 21. 21? Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now that's where I want to go. Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, or confesses me as Lord, Joyce Myers, shall what? Enter into the kingdom of shall heaven. Shall go to heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. The ones that do the will of the Father. Amen. The will of the Father is found in the dark. Now get me First Timothy. 4 and 16. The will of the Father is in the doctrine, and it's the doctrine that saves us. It's the doctrine that gives us the instruction to follow God. I said in the last segment, you don't know how to follow God unless you're taught. Amen. That's where humility comes in. You got to be willing to be taught. In 1 Timothy, is that 4 and 16? 4 and 16. Take heed unto thyself. And unto the doctrine. Take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Continue in the doctrine. Continue in the word of God. Now, continue don't mean you go a little while and then stop. You've got to keep going. Continue is, is endless. doesn't have a conclusion. You're continuing in the word of God. In the doctrine, because it's a doctrine that saves you. Not repeating a verse and telling somebody, hug somebody, tell them you saved, call somebody, uh, tell them you saved. Uh, we saved uh, 500 members at the last revival. Uh, we led them to Christ. Well, you might have led them to Christ, but you ain't saved the soul. Amen. Because the first thing saved is he's converted. The first is converted, he's going to obey the biblical instruction. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin. Yes. They don't even teach water baptism today. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost who promised you unto your children, them that are far off, even as many as the Lord thy God shall call, and many other words he exalts, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Three thousand souls at the church that day, and they remain steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, and went from house to house. Sharing and each had a need. Amen. We share. That's what Shallow Project is all about. We share. How we got Shallow Project? Because people got a mind to give. Right. Make sacrifice. Third Sunday coming up. Yes. Half. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think that's fair. But it's my instruction. Amen. 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 And you think it ain't fair, maybe you're in the wrong assembly. Yeah, right. We're not a club. Yeah. This ain't you uh, uh, pay dues, union dues. And, and No, this is not a club. This is a church. And the rules of the church are not by vote. The rules of the church are set by God through the leader he has chosen. Peter uh, told Ananias and Sapphira, sell your house and give me the money. I'm trying to establish churches. I got a need for it. Amen. They thought, oh, well, no, wait a minute here. Mm -hmm. Sell the house. Wait a minute. Where are we going to live? God didn't ask that question. Amen. To sell the house and bring the money to the church. They sold the house and kept half the money and gave the other half to the church. He said, why you deceive the Holy Ghost? Why you lie to the Holy Ghost? Was it not in your power? Did you not have the authority to, to give all the money? Or did you have the same power, authority to keep half the money and give half the money? He didn't ask for half, he asked for all. Amen. You say, well, that's not fair. It ain't about fair, it's about obedience. Amen. We have a finite, don't know what fair is, no how. He thinks fair is what benefits me. 
Give me that piece. Go away. Give it all. No. You didn't do it. Drop dead. And the young men came and carried Ananias out. Feet first. Dead. Amen. Under grace? Yeah, under grace. Right. Read it for yourself. Amen. And called the wife in. Why do you take part in this? Well, in that day, in time, you know, I can't tell my, my husband what to do. He said, but you could have you put your voice in. Amen. He said, well, wait, the part is mine. You, you, you do what you want with your part and my part. I'm going to give to God. Right. They knew that. She was in agreement with her husband. And he pronounced death on her, and she dropped dead. Right. Man, right. man by our scholars is upset. Well, there must be some type of, maybe we misinterpreted it. No, no. Dead means dead. <laughs> and you drop dead. And you can't interpret. Hallelujah. I'm showing you an example. People don't seem to understand. If God said do this, he got a reason for it. If God said he want all of it, he got a reason for it. First of all, he gave you life. And he can take it tomorrow if you want to. So if I'm for God and I believe the word of God and I'm going to follow God, I'm going to follow God through his leader since God sends a leader to the church. Amen. So if I tell you there's no such thing as one saved always saved, believe what I tell you. Because I'm telling you the truth. And I'm telling you a lie. Amen. And that's why we got 5,000 members and we got an handful. Why? Because they want to hear. Oh, tell me I can smoke. Tell me I can drink. Tell me I can fornicate. Tell me I can lie. Tell me I can cheat. I'm still going to heaven. Because I'm coming to church. You're not coming to church. Yeah. You're going to a meeting place. Right. Yeah. Right. So many people, she got a TV screen around the building, and they can click on this side and see her, and look on that side uh -huh. and see her. Yep. But I'm teaching the truth. No, no TV cameras. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nah. You don't have cameras all the way around the room because it's too crowded. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But we have enough as God would have in His church. We never try to figure out how come these people got 25,000 members and we got a handful. We're going to open up that text straight as the gate near the way to leave like and you. There's be that can find it. So again, church, we have to understand once saved, always saved is one of the greatest lies ever put on the church of God. We just read the text, only they that do the will. Where's the will found? Right here. The will of God is found in the Bible. So therefore, we have to honor the word of God and follow the word of God. I want to uh, kind of close the text here. And, uh, We we'll turn to Hebrews chapter, chapter four. Uh, verse fourteen. Or is that three and fourteen? Try Hebrews three and fourteen. Well, we are made partakers of Christ. That's where I'm going to go. We are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence. If we hold the beginning of our confidence. Confidence in this context means faith. We hold the beginning of our faith. Steadfast unto the end. Steadfast unto the end. Read. Whilst it is said, Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Uh -huh. For some when they had heard did provoke, albeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned? whose carcasses fell in the, in the wilderness, and to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. Watch, read. So, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They couldn't go to heaven because of unbelief. Amen. Amen. Read. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left Oh, us, wait a minute here. Let us fear. Let us fear. What of them, what saved always saved? What have I got to fear about? Amen. Read that again. Let, let, us, us, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of us. A promise of going to heaven be left the church. Uh huh. Any of you should seem to 
come short of it. Oh, wait a minute. You mean to tell me you will come short? Amen. That's what the Bible said. Amen. Now you can misjudge my all you want. The Bible said you can come up short. Amen. But I repeat it. The Bible said you can come up short. Now who's he talking about? He's talking about people that was in the church. Amen. Come up short of the goal. What's the goal? Heaven. Why? Through unbelief. What is unbelief? Disobedience. Amen. I'm going to close with, with uh, is that Romans 13, chapter, verse 25 and 26. Romans. Yes. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel. And the now notice what he says according to my gospel, Amen. Paul speaking. When he got the gospel of Jesus Christ? Yes. Well, he said according to my gospel, as I interpret what Jesus Christ had taught me to tell Amen. you. Read. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Yes. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known Spirit to all... Scriptures of the prophets being the teaching of the prophet. Uh-huh. Made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Made known to all nations for obedience of the faith. Brothers and sisters, once saved, always say, you can take the word obedience and throw it out the Bible. Amen. Right. And one saved always say, no need for obedience. Take repentance, throw it outside the Bible. No need to repent about anything. Amen. Well, yeah, well, you don't know what I've done yesterday. Don't care. It don't count. But the last teaching Jesus gave, that repentance, that remission of sin, is preaching his name to all nations, beginning at you. And Drew was the beginning of the Acts 238 church. Amen. Lord, don't let me fail. I want to be your bride. When my grace be full. Hold me by your side. When my grace be full.